So I wanted to do a video on a partnership that uses aggregate allocations in a scenario where there's more aggregate income than book tax difference to cure. And in this case, we're going to use um, this a trading partnership, which means that 90% of its assets are considered trading assets, so stocks and bonds. And the allocation we're going to use is going to be different than a normal allocation that would occur in a partnership. So in the example we have below, we have investors A, B, and C who have a book income percentage of 50, 25, 25, which means that they share in gap capital in the fund, 50% going to one person, 25% to another, 25% to the third. And in this case, book income and taxable income, there's a difference of $25, which means that the partners in the, in the partnership economically earned $100 but have only been taxed on 75. So they have a book tax difference of $25 or they have a bill of $25 due. So in this case, they have a current year book tax difference of 13, six and six for the three partners. Now, looking at the way this normally would be allocated, $75 would go 50, 25, 25, but looking at the current year book tax difference, plus any beginning book tax difference, we may get a different scenario if we used our aggregate allocations. And depending on how much aggregate income we get, the answer could also vary. So in this example, the first investor has $75 of beginning gap capital versus $50 of beginning tax capital, meaning that historically this investor earned $75 but was only taxed on 50, whereas this investor earned $75 but was taxed on 100. So this investor was undertaxed by $25, whereas this one was overtaxed by $25. Now, the first step of, so this section was going through what an allocation normally would look like under a book income percentage. Tax income going 38, 19, and 19. If we used an aggregate allocation, we'd break it up into a few parts. The first part is allocating the non-aggregate income. This is considered the ordinary income or income taxed at ordinary rates. This could be line one, line two, line five, six, 11, interest dividends, ordinary business income. We first allocate that to each of the investors. So in this case, it's going to be 13, six and six for that $25. The next part is then determining what the book tax difference is for book income minus the non-aggregate income. The reason we do this is that we want to isolate the aggregate income as a means to cure the book tax difference historically plus the current year. So in this case, we would take $50 minus 13 to get to 38, 25 minus six for 19, 25 minus six for 19. So that gets us $75 of current year book tax difference related to non-aggregate income. The third part, is going to be taking your beginning book tax difference. So that's your cumulative book tax difference up until this point, which we saw before for investor one, this investor was undertaxed by 25, investor two was overtaxed by 25. Thinking of it another way, this investor needs $25 of gain in order to have its book tax difference cured. This investor needs losses to have its book tax difference cured. We get to this point where, we're, where we add up the buildup which once again is the current year book tax difference related to non-aggregate income plus the beginning disparity, which gets us our tentative disparity, which is 63, negative six and 19. This one is negative because the beginning disparity of 25 is larger than the current year book tax difference. So this investor at this point would need $6 of loss in order to get its book tax difference even. This investor needs the largest amount of gain, $63 to be even, while well, this investor needs 19. So the first thing that we're going to do then at this point is split between positives and negatives. So we would take 63 and 19, or a total of 81, and derive a percent based on that. So 63 over 81 and 19 over 81. The reason for this is because we want to think if we have gains, how do we want to allocate it in a way that solves the book tax difference the greatest for these investors? 
Because this investor has the largest book tax difference of the $81 of total positive, this investor would need most of the gains. So in this case, 77% of the gains would go to one investor, versus 23 to the other. This investor needs losses, in which case it would get 100% of the losses, because it's the only investor that currently needs them. In our situation, we have $50 of long-term capital gain. So that $50 would be given to investor A 77% and investor C by 23%. It would get us 38 and 12. But if we had a situation where instead of it being $50, it was, let's say, 100 in that case, our book tax difference here was $81. Actually, let's just make this 101. So, in this case, our positive number was 81. And then we you know, split it out between 77 and 23%. But if that's the total book tax difference that needs to be solved, if we have more income than the book tax difference that needs to be solved, that means we're gonna have excess income meaning that the difference between the 80, the 101 and the 81 is $20. Once we cure the book tax difference of $81, we need to decide how to allocate the remaining income. That basically means that the aggregate income here isn't going to be the 101 of line 9 or of long term, but rather it's going to be the limit. So it's going to be the $81. So in this case, we're going to take the $81 and multiply it by the positive and negative percent. So once again, this part B21 is now going to become AP3. And our $81 is gonna be given to these investors. So as you can see, the tentative disparity was $63, which it's getting, and this one was $19, which it was getting. So at this point, our book tax difference, the tentative disparity minus aggregate allocation is zero for two investors and $6 of loss for another. So as of now, there's no more book tax difference. These two investors have in essence been filled up so that they've gotten taxable income to the point where their book and tax are now equal. But the question is what to do with the remaining $20. That's what would go into, in this case, an excess allocation. An excess allocation is the remainder left over after the aggregate income has been allocated. So for us, we know that's going to be $20. That excess allocation is going to revert back to the ordinary allocation, or in this case, our book allocation percentage. We've cured the book tax difference, so now we're gonna go back to normal allocation. So in this case, it's gonna go 50, 25, 25. So now we get, for aggregate alloc excess allocation, 10, five, and five. We changed taxable income a little bit in this example while going through it. Basically, taxable income now is going to be the ordinary income allocation. It's gonna be three components. Ordinary income or non-aggregate plus the aggregate allocation plus the excess. So when you have a situation where you have more taxable income, more aggregate income than the book tax difference that you're solving, in this case, we're going with positive numbers. We can do a positive negative example after, but in this case, you'll have a, a piece that's considered excess that you then allocate on an ordinary income percentage. Hope this helps.